We're often told today that the best presentations are customized to that particular audience, that the strongest form of presenting doesn't just sound like one person standing up and lecturing a group of people, it sounds and feels and has the tone of a conversation. Now, how do you do that on purpose? You have set material that you have to get through. How do you make it feel customized? Well, there are many answers to that question. Today, I'd like to share with you just one. And the reason I'd like to focus on this one is that you can do it on the fly. This particular one does not require that you sit in your hotel room the night before doing hours of research on a particular industry. It's just a verbal rhetorical device and you can use it easily. Let's take a particular example. I was chatting with a, a friend and speaker the other day who speaks on AI and how the culture and leadership issues interact with the new world of AI. And on one of his slides, he brings up the simple idea that benchmarking is counterintuitive. Now, let's assume you've put that headline up on the slide. Benchmarking is counterintuitive. He would then ordinarily proceed into explaining why benchmarking is counterintuitive and why it doesn't work. But instead of doing that, in order to connect with the audience, all he has to do is take a second to ask them a few rhetorical questions. So it plays out like this. You've finished one section, you proceed into the next one. Your slide comes up and it talks about benchmarking. You stop for a second and you do not disseminate information. You ask them questions. You go, what benchmarking do you do? How's that working out for you? Have you learned something about it? Or could it be doing more damage to you than good? And then you give your information on your theory about benchmarking. What was the point and the purpose of those questions, those rhetorical questions? Well, realistically, nothing. All it did was it said, we're talking here. I'm challenging you. I'm asking you questions. And now I'm giving you ideas. Those rhetorical questions make it feel like a conversation. They take you out of the impression of lecture mode and into something a bit more vital. It's extremely easy to do. So let's say again, you're talking about how to overcome fear in speaking. You don't simply say, do this, do this, do this. You say, let's talk about fear of speaking. What happens to you? When you think about it, biologically, what are your reactions? Do your palms sweat? Does your voice go? What is your particular reaction? Well, let me share some ways that you can solve that problem. So the hypothetical questions, the rhetorical questions are really just there to connect and to get rid of that sense of a lecture. They make it seem real. They make it seem immediate and they give you the opportunity for a little bit of charm.